I'm a member of Al-Anon, and um, I've been practicing uh, centering prayer um, somewhere between 10 and 12 years. I'm relatively new to a formal welcoming prayer practice, and um, fortunately for me, um, maybe about um, eight years ago, maybe nine years ago, um, I had a sponsor um, who is an energy and body worker, and he started encouraging me um, to have a more embodied experience. And I'm grateful for that. I, I didn't actually think um, that I was getting it. And um, but it's it's a subtle, nuanced um, thing for me to be getting more in touch with my body. Most of my life, I have been um, unembodied, if there is such a word. I, I have not landed very well or been very present and have been uh, even unaware that I was having that experience. The things that would get my attention had to be pretty big, like anxiety would get my attention. Um, if I were physically sick, those kind of things that were obvious enough that I couldn't ignore them or avoid them. And when I started um, with the welcoming prayer practice a couple of years or so ago, however long ago I came into the group, um, I think it's been a little over two years, I was really physically ill. And it was very scary for me when we would do uh, the practice, when we would go through the three movements. And when I was being asked or was suggested that I, is to the best of my ability, that I become aware of what was going on in my body. And at that time, and I can still actually feel this way, um, I was really concerned that I was going to bring on the illness that I was dealing with, bring on an episode or that exacerbate whatever it was, you know, that was happening with me. And I had to trust um, and kind of make myself in some way try to get present. Um, and that's what it was like for me. Initially, I had a lot of fear, um, a lot of res resistance to it, but also um, a, a real sense that I really needed to have a new experience and I wanted to deepen my experience with my third and 11th steps. And um, so, you know, sort of... Um, going back a little bit into what my earlier experience was like, I just, um, you know, being somebody who wanted to be safe in my life, um, my parents died uh, within five weeks of each other about nine years ago. And at that point, I made a commitment to myself that I wanted to have more vulnerability, that I wanted to be more vulnerable because I didn't have a choice. I felt like the um, veil had been lifted and that I was just really porous and didn't know how to cope with what was going on. And by that point, I'd been in recovery for a while. I had done a formal third step um, many times, but you know, especially the first time, I didn't really understand what I was agreeing to. Um, and I think that that's, for me, that that's God's grace, that the rug wasn't pulled out from under my feet. Um, I just proceeded to, you know, continue my recovery and didn't really know what was going to be asked of me. And I, that for me is grace because I think if, you know, if I had the ability to see into the future, it would have been, um, a very fearful thing it would have been a nightmare for me to imagine and try to cope with that. And so um, 
this analogy kind of came to me when I was writing about, you know, these, these hybrid cars that we have now where um, they drive themselves, you know, I'm, I'm can be a passenger in this car, but I don't have to do anything. And, you know, for me, the car represents sort of my mind and a disembodied experience sort of taking me along and I'm there and I'm in this um, car, which is, you know, my being, but I'm not present. I'm really not experiencing, um, you know, what's happening to me in a very conscious way. And I think for me, the experience of agreeing to uh, be vulnerable and actually seeking that out um, has been leading me slowly along into, um, you know, choosing a sponsor who was, um, had this kind of practice and kept encouraging me to be more embodied. Um, getting into a relationship, I'd been single for a really long time. That was really frightening. Um, you know, anticipation of being intimate with somebody, anticipating that. Um, I really needed to, that was another thing that called me forth to be present for that experience and to be present with myself before I contemplated having that experience. And um, I've just continued to have these things that have asked more of me. And in the process of that, um, it's been necessary and important for me to get more present. So um, I came into our group on Thursday nights and, um, you know, felt really inadequate, felt like I had no idea what anybody was doing, um, you know, was still very much in my head about the experience and, um, but kept coming back. There was something compelling to me about um, the experience that we were all having together. And as I've stayed in the group and I'm committed to being there on Thursday nights, another thing that I did was to buy the 40 day uh, practice book and that helped me also because we only have really one meeting a week. I think there are probably a couple of other ones, but this time is the best for me on Thursdays. And so I did that practice. And now um, I do in the morning when I do my first sit, I do that practice before I do the sit, the welcoming prayer practice to try to get more embodied and more available um, to the experience that I'll have in the centering prayer. And I also do that <clears throat> with my second sit in the afternoon. And that's helping to sort of bookend my day a little bit. Um, the other thing that I've noticed is that I have more awareness um, in my body just daily. Um, I mean, for instance, right now, while I'm talking to you or talking to whoever may or may not see this video, I'm aware that my stomach is tight. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't have as, I'm not as relaxed in my body as I would like to be, but I'm not trying to uh, necessarily um, get rid of that experience or to, you know, to have some kind of spiritual bypass while I'm sitting here. Um, and that's helpful for me to, when I'm out in the world, I don't have necessarily the time or it may not be a comfortable um, circumstance for me to do a formal uh, welcoming prayer because I might, you know, I'm not going to close my eyes and have that kind of embodied experience. It's, it is, as they say, consent on the go. And that, and that is one of the ways that I use it. I, you know, when I'm in a situation and I feel myself starting to have some kind of uh, response, I I feel it now in my body. I do have more awareness of that. 
And I try to, um, you know, just relax about it more, um, to come back to myself, to consent to God's presence, and to accept whatever it is, the experiences that I'm having. It's it's a really interesting way of living. It, it slows me down. I mean, I can't be in my body or even wanting to have that experience if there isn't a willingness to um, get with God. I, I feel like God is in those moments when I can slow down. You know, we talk a lot in, in recovery, at least I've heard this a lot about pausing when agitated or doubtful. And, you know, I have this pause now in my life because I've been around for a while and <clears throat> that is part of I think what enables me to get more embodied um, because I'm not just charging through my life I'm not the bull in the china shop um, anymore and, and when I say that um, you know it's important for me too to say that I'm still having a very human experience with all of this you know, I, I don't do any of this perfectly. Um, you know, I, you know, for people who have watched Seinfeld felt and, and watched Elaine dance, you know, how awkward she is. I mean, that's me as a human being going through my life, having this experience with welcoming prayer. Um, you know, I, I'm not a, a, any kind of guru. I haven't arrived anywhere. I'm still very much practicing all of this. And, it's been a revelation to me, I think, in the last, um, I don't know, you know, particularly in the last couple of weeks after being asked to participate in this, to really come to understand and appreciate that I have more of an experience of the welcoming prayer going on with me sort of continually than I ever thought that I did. Um and that there's some comfort in that for me. You know, I um, used to go up to Fellowship of the Spirit in Colorado. I went about seven years. And I remember hearing this guy speak one time. I don't remember if he was, you know, if he was on a panel or if he was one of the speakers. But he talked about driving his old jalopy of life, you know. And I just loved that. And, and, um, and then this whole thing about the hybrid kind of came to me. And... Um, you know, I'm I'm not in control, and mm -hmm. and I want to be. I mean, I would love you know the things that Keating talks about those habitual programs for happiness that I have, those needs for security, you know, affection and control. I still need and want all of those things, and um, I started writing some more inventory yesterday at. Um, the suggestion of a dear friend of mine that I was doing a program check-in with. And I've been dealing with this um, particular situation that I have been in um, for a while. And I thought I had pretty much licked this thing, you know, that I was doing well. And when I started to write um, yesterday, I watched myself getting so physically uncomfortable, even when I was writing on the page and this, um, you know, I'm not having an intellectual experience anymore with my recovery. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I think for me, it's it's like stages in life, stages in recovery. It's all, I mean, there hasn't been any part of my life and my recovery that I haven't needed. I've needed every minute of it to get exactly where I am today. And, um, but I don't have a lot of tolerance internally if i feel like i'm phoning something in or i'm falling back on oh this you know page 52 in the big book the bedevilments it's like okay that's great that i know that that we have a common language it's important and for me how am i living with that experience and can i talk to you about it just in my own words and from my own experience, you know, without having to um, sort of detach from the experience by needing to use a certain kind of language that for me can sometimes feel like a defense, 
you know, or a way to not be in the experience itself. And so, um, yeah, this is just, it's really unexpected. You know, I, I, I think, you know, with COVID, um, going through a breakup and also having such big health concerns all happening at the same time, um, I really felt like God was saying, okay, you know, uh, there's more surrender that you're going to be asked to do. I, I had no control. I mean, I really had no control. And so I got really, really active, you know, um, in a new way in my love and step with the welcoming prayer. Um, and it has, it's really changed my life. I mean, it really has changed my life.